folks, it's Friday night and it's time for chaos. It's also time for the season two mid-season finale. Episode 10. This is it. Halfway through the season. I like to call it the mid-season finale. Mm. Uh, Sweeps week. Yep, sweeps week. We're pulling out all the stops. We're going to have several guest stars pop in throughout today's oh, session. Great. Uh, and then we're taking a three-month break before we come back with episode 11. No, I'm kidding. That part is not happening. But wouldn't that be fun? And we could all <laughs> breathe. I would have nothing left to do. So I am uh, against this. No, we keep recording. Plan. We just oh, we right, make great. them wait. Oh, that's fine. Make them no, wait. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah. yeah just we just, just keep give recording. me a reason to wake up. Take a break. <laughs> <laughs> I, I realize that this is a game to you, Troy, but for the rest of us, this is the only thing tethering us to, to life and sanity. <laughs> this is so much better than the real world. I can't believe it's been 10 episodes. So, well, it hasn't yet, but it will be in just under two hours. Uh, thoughts so far on London. The London chapter, however you want to call it. Having a ball. I mean. Yeah. Is it what you expected? What did you expect after the events of New York and the Juju House? I mean, to be honest, I got a little nervous when we started hearing about shopkeepers. And I know that thread still hasn't been fully explored, but it was just like, is this just going to be the same thing again? Like, obviously, <laughs> just, you There's know, that's not, I'm not over from dog you. and you, Troy, or whatever, but it's just like, oh, we have another suspicious thing. Uh, there's a cult. I'm guessing that's just going to be evergreen, uh, but <laughs> but especially but it was still like we've, I've still been having a blast, obviously, and uh, I feel like we kind of got into a groove way sooner than we did in season one, which is understandable because we've been playing together for now for a while. But mm. um, yeah, it's it's great. I'm 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 enamored. You're yeah, enamored with, a, with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys feel like you know what's going on here in uh, in this section of the story? I have sort of uncovered some yeah. dramatic yes. some people. Yeah, I have um, guesses, but nothing has coalesced yet. Yeah, right? but there's enough tantalizing threads that want tugging on and weaving together. A couple of key suspects, a couple of mm -hmm. key locations, some some threads that still need uh, looking at. Um, yeah, and yeah. so what do you where do you think Lesser Edale fits into all of this? That's what's blowing my mind. Yeah, is. at first right? I thought this was total like a uh, side quest territory, but now my imagination's running wild. It's like it's all connected. I still think man. it might be like a bit of yeah. a side quest. Yeah, um, it could be a bait and switch. Yet. Yeah, it could be a bait and switch with this werewolf thing. It might not be a werewolf. Maybe maybe it's, it's maybe it's the red herring in the story. I don't mm -hmm. know. My brain goes. I've been I've been doing a rewatch of Twin Peaks since Twin Peaks Day on the twenty fourth. So now my brain's all going to like, what if somebody comes back? Like we see another character, but it's not them. It's their identically looking cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Did you start back with like season one of Twin Peaks? This is the second time yeah. Twin Peaks has been mentioned uh, yeah. in recordings this week. Um, God, what a great show. Even I season to. two is a disaster, but it's still worth watching. Oh, I man. never did they, it. It loses the plot. Half, but I still love it. Like, it's still, like, <laughs> it gets so agree. weird. I it love, so I love weird. season two. But I love weird. Yeah, it definitely uh, gets much weirder because Lynch left, and I think they just brought in a bunch of people to, like, try and lynch it up, and it's just a lot more craziness, a lot more dreams. Oh, I th I'm sorry. I thought you meant season three. Yes. Oh, season, no, season, does, oh, does, oh, season three was no, fucking no. insane and awesome. Three yeah, I love fantastic. season three. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, season two gets like, uh, but introduces a whole bunch of new characters that I'm like, why are you even? Why are you here? <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but I, I really but I, that's why I'm, I'm trying to like think like if this was because Troy, you tell a story so cinematically, and I'm like, what's uh, what's next? What's the new? What's the thing that's gonna pop up and almost? It does kind of feel like you're in a little Twin Peaksy town trying to solve. Uh, a murder and it definitely has that vibe this little Some wicker man situation yeah. instead yeah. of a mountain town it's like this weird valley town and everybody knows everybody um what did a kind of was the constable or the reverend last week was like we we are a town that deals with small problems this yeah nothing like this ever happens here um well, it's I'm, also hard for yeah. me to not go and think about like like i try to like do the math on it because like this entire 
I feel like I read this a long time ago that this entire uh, campaign was written by like a screenwriter, right? Who during like yeah. a writer strike. Yeah, Larry Dottillo. Yeah, and it was like in the mid '80s. So in my mind, I'm like thinking about like, all right, what were the tropes during the '80s of <laughs> oh, horror yeah. movies? And I was like, and and this whole thing obviously has a lot of American Werewolf in London. This storyline, yeah, so I was like, like I was like, that came out early. I think that's like an '82 joint or something. '80. That's an early '80s. So that had already come out. So maybe he's cribbing on that. Like, uh, but then obviously, have other people have contributed to the story since then. So you I'm should sitting know. there trying to like do the Rubik's cube of like what. What cinematic tropes are we falling into? Several of you will be excited to know this because I don't know if you know this. Larry Dottillo, who is like the uber creator of this, there were several other writers involved, but it was kind of like his brainchild, uh, also is known for creating She-Ra. <gasps> yes. From the He-Man Whoa. universe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is the co-creator of She-Ra. Amazing. Uh, awesome. Which was wonderful um, back in the day. Remember the old He-Man movie? That was a weird one. Don't get me started, Troy. <laughs> I am ready to go. I've got a God Skeletor figure right there. Whoa. Let this be our final battle. Frank Langella, the performance of a lifetime. Did you ever Don't tell you about the time I was in a tiny little bathroom with Frank Langella after he oh. won the Tony? <laughs> and okay. I heard him straining to pee. <laughs> <laughs> Frank was he Lange- doing it was, as Nixon or whatever the fuck he won that I don't know if I've told for. this on a podcast before or if I just have this story because I used to work for Getty Images and one of, one of the gigs I have is like I'd go to events and like just edit uh, EPKs, electronic press kits of events. And so I one time I did the Tonys and it was on, I think it was at the Beacon Theater. And so I was in a hotel across the street and I'd run to the Beacon. A uh, producer would come out, give me footage, go back to this hotel. And the hotel is also where all the winners and nominees were coming over to being uh, interviewed. So at one point, I'm, I'm waiting for some footage. I'm kind of hanging out. And I'm like, I got to use the restroom. So I go into this tiny little one stall, two urinal situation. And there's an envelope sitting on the sink. I, I apologize if I've told this before in the Glass Cannon podcast. Uh, there's an envelope sitting on the sink. And I kind of just glance over and it's Frank Langella. And I look down, and I realize the envelope is the envelope with his name that he had just won. They hand it to the winners afterwards. Now, I don't. In my mind, he had the Tony sitting on the top of the urinal, but I don't think that was true. <laughs> but the envelope was sure there. So I'm like, I go in to the stall. I'm a stall man. Uh, story for another time. Uh, I like a stall. I like, a, I like, I call it the executive. I go in there. I like to really enjoy myself. And uh, I'm so just that listening. when someone has to come in and actually take a crap, you are there just casually peeing. I just, I have a, a nervous bladder. And uh, so I, I'm just listening to him, old man, pee it up. And, uh, and I'm like, uh, all right, sounds like he's going to be a while. I'm just going to get out of here. So I go and I go to wash my hands and I splash water all over his Tony envelope. The, I basically turn on the sink. It's one of those sinks. You're like, let me just turn it on the tiniest amount psh, everywhere. And I'm like, fire hose. And I just leave. That was my Goodbye. Frank Langella story. <laughs> so do you think he framed that Troy and that there's like a tiny little Quantity of Troy Lavalley DNA. Oh, I imagine. Glass <laughs> in the, like, uh, look, right, like, wait a minute. Is that a water <laughs> spot? <laughs> um, he probably has a story about you being like, this guy who went into the, the stall, he didn't even go poop. And then he came out <laughs> and he, he wow. splashed my that envelope. Sounds like him. He splashed my envelope, that <laughs> son of a gun. I like I had trouble with my prostate. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make him leave. Yeah. Uh, well, today's episode is dedicated both to Frank Langella and the cinematic classic He-Man starring Dolph Lundgren. Uh, let's all make a luck roll because yes. ooh, you might need it. You might need it in an episode like this. Oh, dear. Um, it's an not episode. the middle of the show. I don't feel right doing it. I know, right? The- <laughs> I know what we're doing here. Yeah. We're not it's hastily doing it after remembering <laughs> it halfway through. Uh, I right. Do I want to fail? Or do yes, you, you want to fail. fail. Oh, okay, there are two like, roles shit. you want to <laughs> fail in this game. Luck improvement That's roles right. yeah, it's and uh, sanity uh, like to understand the intelligence role to fully understand okay. the complexity of your what you see you guys haven't rolled a sanity roll in a while too yeah yeah, yeah this fresh good country about that. air is keeping you regular i'm so excited i this i had a little extra time to prep this one and i just as i'm doing i'm like ooh, and i also like thought you might have got to some of this stuff before so i feel like i've double and triple prepped it and i also feel like i might forget everything but i'm just really excited to play and explore with you guys and see what we come up with for the mid-season finale uh last week your investigation 
uh, continued into the mysterious deaths that took place three months ago in the little country village of Lesser Edale. Whether Jackson came out here himself to investigate or not, you don't know. You know this story was a story of note for him, and you are in the thick of it now. A young girl was torn to shreds on one night, leaving only her grieving father behind. Uh, a husband and father of two young girls was also torn apart, leaving a widow and the young daughters behind. Then on the third night, a man was attacked, but somehow managed to live. A man by the name of Harold Short. On that same night, the uh, the, the constable, the only policeman in this one-horse town, Constable Tumwell, went out, tracked a large dog to the edge of the woods, woods and put three bullets in its hide. The body of the animal was never found, but there have been no further attacks, so the case is considered closed. Even though the townsfolk still all hear this mysterious howling through the valley almost every night, increasingly so as of late. The father of the girl who was killed says a neighbor of his saw the son of the ruler of the area. Ruler of the area is Lord Arthur Vane, saw the son, Lawrence Vane, wandering around on the night of her murder, looking distraught. He thinks that the Vanes know something that they're not telling us. They live up in Plum Castle. You got Lord Arthur Vane. He's a member of the House of Lords in London. He's returned home in the wake of all this um, awfulness here in Lesser Edale joining his young son, Lawrence, and his daughter, uh, who keep house while he's away. You speak to the vicar, Reverend Stratton, after attending one of his services. He seems troubled, uh, perhaps by the nagging feeling that whatever Constable Tumwell shot didn't end the problem, or perhaps by the fact that he saw the creature himself, a creature he describes as a huge, dark shape shrouded by the mist with burning red eyes. You inquire about the veins, and uh, the Reverend gives you a history lesson on their reign. Carter notices strange letterhead on his desk that reads the Derwent Order of the Golden Druid, as well as a paper with the word vein on it and a curious Latin translation guide. You go and speak with the constable, and he is steadfast in his conviction that the matter is closed. Even though with a psychology check, you detect this, this hint that maybe even he isn't so sure. You use his phone, the one phone in this town, to follow up on a phone number you found after breaking into Harold Short's house, where you reach his brother in the seaside town of Skegness, where Harold is recuperating ever since the attack. You convince the brother to speak with Harold, who is clearly still haunted by the memory of the attack, and he describes the creature just as the Reverend did, mentioning the burning red eyes. You leave the constable and head back through the rain to the Laughing Horse Inn, where you're staying. You see a boisterous crowd surrounding a beautiful young man holding court in the bar in the midst of all this revelry. Feruz and Margot get into a heated private discussion as they finally openly discuss the fact that they belong to the same secret order. Carter notices that they are embroiled in this discussion, and while he's watching them, he also sees a man at a table nearby who seems to just be staring at both Margot and Feruz. Meanwhile, Vaughn slowly approaches the man at the center of everyone's attention young Lawrence Vane, the heir to Plum Castle. Where do we even begin? I say we just push this off. Let's just stop the session. Let's just... <laughs> this just is, the mid-season <laughs> finale slash recap is over. A little banter, a little recap, and Flashback. we'll see you in a month. Peru! <laughs> <laughs> Flashback to Peru. That'd be a good like. That actually this would was be a TV sweet. show. We start yeah. with Peru, and you see some. Cool. I'll try to work so, that in more. So Carter sees the guy staring at Margot and Feru, or staring at Margot and Feru's. Yeah, let's pick up there, Carter. Okay. You see this? All right. We, well, we, you know, we finished with uh, Vaughn approaching uh, Lawrence Vane, dashing blonde hair, all of like 23, 24, 25. Everyone just looking at him like. What a man of the people, the future ruler of Lesser Edel. And that, and, and Vane, this is the same person who was found 
decidedly not cool looking the night of that murder, right? Like right. he was he distraught. was distraught in quotes. Okay. Yeah. Um Lydia Parkins' father uh said his neighbor, Tom Cordy, saw Lawrence Vane wandering around that night nearby looking distraught. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we'll, Carter will we'll focus in on you, Carter. You see this guy, and he's just kind of looking. The fuck? Okay, I'm gonna walk over to him. As you start to walk over, he gets up from his chair. Oddly, at like the exact same same time, you begin walking in that direction and starts to head towards the door. You continue to pursue. Yeah, I'm going to start walking towards him, but I'm going to have a little, like, swaggy, drunk, like, uh, I'm acting drunk. Acting I, drunk, I, I could okay. have just said that. I don't know why I was fucking We'll say as you're walking, a, uh, a large guy, like, crosses in front of you with two mugs of ale, and you, like, almost run into him, and he spills him, and he's like, oh, oh slow down there, old chap, or you'll be uh, buying the next sorry. round. I after apologize, I'm American. <laughs> well... Where are you off to in such a hurry? And he's got oh. the beers, and he's kind of like blocking your way. I think I see someone I recognize. And I try to get around him. And he's like, oh, no, no, what's the matter? Why don't you come have a drink with my friend and I? And, uh, and, and he just reeks of alcohol. Oh, no. Uh, two shakes of a lamb's tail, I promise. Hey, hey, oh, let me no. ask you something. Hey, yes? I don't mean to be rude. Mm. But I saw you on the other side of the bar, and you see the guy is now out the door. What's up? Uh, what's wrong with your face? Uh, <laughs> God. It uh, it needs some air. Excuse me, and I'm I run. I'm gonna run. If you want me to roll, I fucking roll. Uh, come on. So you just leave him. Ah, uh, you yeah. run outside. Yep. Yeah. You get outside. You don't see the guy. Give me a spot hidden. No, oh, no. Uh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll roll some dice. No, uh, yeah, no, I failed it. I don't see. Okay. Want to use some luck? You want to do uh, something like I don't uh, a have... new tactic? Push the roll. Oh, push, push the spot. The yeah, you can push. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, Carter, like, covers both eyes. He covers the other eye for a second. <laughs> Uh, so he does this to try to like maybe this will attune me to the evening. <laughs> it's light. raining. It's raining and, uh, still. Yeah, and then open and really <laughs> pry my eyeball open. <laughs> this isn't great, guys. My spot hidden's like a twenty, like a high twenties. It's a twenty-eight. Nope. No. Nope. Thirty-two. My oh, eyeball dear. falls out. All right. No. Here's what I'm gonna say. Uh, remember, sometimes if you can fail forward. Okay. Uh-huh. And this is what happens: is you look around and you see. This guy has made considerable distance between the distance between the entrance to the Laughing uh, Horse Inn and where he is, which seems to be like towards the southern end of Lesser Adeal, like walking off into uh, like off the beaten path. So he must have like took off he just the ran, second he yeah. got outside. Like there's no way he could have caused uh, cre- like created that much distance between you and him. Um, do you want to pursue? Uh, I'll, I'll go. If he's going off the trail, I want to see where off where exactly he's going off the road or whatever. Okay. So yes. All right. So he he's, he's on the road for a little bit, and you see him goes off the road, and he goes like I don't want to say into the woods, but he's not on like the normal path. He doesn't seem to be going near any houses or anything. Uh, are you following stealthily or just trying to keep pace? Uh, I I could roll a stealthy thing. Okay. Uh, which is a little better than my spot hidden. 22 under 61. Uh, okay, I love this. In the rain, in the night, you stealthily follow this man. You kind of catch up to where you initially saw him and go into this... Again, I don't want to call it woods, but it's off the beaten path. You go off the beaten path, and uh, you hear rustling up ahead, and then... You hear the opening of a car door. Oh, these fuckers with this car. Okay. Okay. You hear the opening of a car door. You come to a clearing, and you see this guy getting, like, getting ready to get into a car. Okay. Um, is there a shrub <laughs> that I could <laughs> throw myself into? Uh, yeah. Go ahead and uh, 
Go ahead and give me another stealth. Roll for foliage. We're rolling 21 under 61. Yeah. All right, you hide in a bush. Ha! Just like... And you feel like he doesn't see you. However, he stops for a moment mm-hmm. and looks around. And then he goes to get in the car. He shuts the door. Does the car on. does the car look like the car we spotted? It's hard to see in the night, in hard to London. see in the rain. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. It's unclear. And you don't see anybody else in the car? Mm-hmm. You don't think. And he starts the engine and he begins driving off. Okay. I unfold my own car that I've kept in my pocket. <laughs> uh, there's that, like, wasn't there some show in the 80s where a guy could turn into a car? <laughs> I, do, I do that. Uh, no. Okay, I just kind of watch Jason it go. The Wheel Warriors there's, some way to, there's some way to view a license plate or some identifying feature would be cool. Uh, yeah, go ahead and give me a roll. Spot. I'm assuming that's a spot. Mm-hmm. We know I'm awesome at that. A uh, five under 28. Ooh. Yeah. I was going to say, we need at least a hard, if not That's an extreme. extreme. Yeah, Amazing. an extreme is definitely going to give you the license plate. It is different than the one that Margot has. Um, or it doesn't ring a bell or anything. And uh, you commit it to memory. Great. And the car takes off, keeping its headlights off for a while, just driving mm-hmm. like in the darkness. Hmm. And eventually, you no longer hear the sound of it. We come back to Vaughn staring at this gentleman. As you approach, an older man slaps Lawrence Vane on the back, and he puts on a long overcoat and a knit cap, and he says... Uh, I must to work, Mr. Vane. Always a pleasure speaking with you. Stick around, won't you? Once I relieve the boys at the mines, they'll you know you're going to come. They're going to come here and they're going to want to say hello to you. Uh, it's always a pleasure speaking to you. Always a pleasure. And he uh, picks up his things and walks out. And the young man kind of follows him out. And as his eyes are following uh, the older man out, they catch you, Vaughn. Uh, and he smiles. And he says, well, hello there, old sport. What uh, corner of hello, God's man. green earth um, did you emerge from? I hope you don't terribly favorite. mind if I, if I join you. Oh, not at all, please. Uh, detect from your accent you're a fellow countryman, but yet I've never seen you around Lesser Adel. Uh, where are you from? Um, well, uh, it's bred in Eagle's Grange, not, not terribly far from here. But, um, I, I've been, uh, rather peripatetic since then. I've spent some time in Asia, South America, America. I've only lately returned, old man. Oh. But, um, I've never made my way to Lesser before. It's a pleasure to meet the, uh, laird of the manor, so to speak. I, I must say a man about the world, such as yourself, and yet you chose Lesser Adel as a destination for your holiday. What, uh, I'm, I'm flattered, but, uh... Uh, as someone who has traveled uh, all of the continents, why, why Lesser Adel? Well, when when one's been so long away from the bosom of Albion, one uh, uh, is drawn to its 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 little hamlets, where the hearth fire still still burns, or Britannia. But also, uh, a friend of mine, I think, uh, was curious about this particular locale as well, and I'm sort of following his footsteps, as it were. Oh, I see. And are you um, traveling alone, or with anyone? Oh, no, I have a a rather eclectic assortment of companions. Ah, I see. He lights up a cigarette. Do you smoke? Oh, may I? Uh, uh, Yes, I I will. I I reach over to light his. Oh, Um, very kind. And I'm sorry, I didn't didn't catch your name. Villiers, uh, old man. Vaughn Villiers. He, like, shakes your hand with his cigarette hand. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Villiers. Um, my name is Lawrence Vane. Uh, that would mean something to everyone else in this bar, but probably nothing to you. Uh, my father is the uh, 
the lord of the manor as it were um, if you've uh, seen the the, the oh, city yeah. during the daytime you've no doubt seen the castle at the top of the hill I call that place my home <laughs> well uh, you're being frightfully modest Mr. Vane yes your uh, your reputation indeed precedes you it seems as though you're on everyone's tongue that we've spoken to here in Edel well, I, you know, I, I try to be a, a man about town, as it were. I have a, a lot of free time, especially now that my father is here, ruling from his seat. And I like to I like to be out here and uh, amongst the common folk, as it were. Um, you know, ultimately, uh, when I when I take over one day, the, I hope to still be able to do these things, although my father says uh, things will change then. I'm, I'm happy to enjoy the, the fruits of my freedom, as it were. Yes, and it's then how delightful it is to meet um, one so well-bred and so uh, gilded by gentility who still has the common touch. Uh, You've quite a way with words, Mr. Villiers. Are you a poet or uh, perhaps a writer of some sort? No, I've had, I've had, uh, I've had friends who were. But um, uh, I've, I'm an amateur, an amateur of letters only. <laughs> um, I'm curious, though, being a... Uh, not local. If if I and my friends might, um, only because we've heard so much about its ancient beauty from the local vicar, if we might uh, see Plum Castle with our own eyes. Do you accept visitors? <laughs> uh, not not uh, not in the conventional sense, but I I, I would be uh, I would be very happy to uh, extend an invitation, perhaps a dinner for uh, your friends and yourself um, tomorrow evening. Um, I would be I, I would be, be much obliged. Yes, I imagine someone as well travelled as you would have many a story. It would delight my father and sister and I um, to to hear of such things. Uh, Perhaps 4.30 tomorrow evening, uh, you come to Plum Castle, I'll let the servants know to expect you, and we'll have a, a fine dinner. You may count on it, uh, Mr. Vane. I, I should never miss the opportunity to enjoy the pleasure of your company. Well, um, um, I am curious, though. There are, yes. uh, <laughs> speaking of stories, and my, my friends and I have a great many, um, mm -hmm. there are a great many stories sort of circulating here in Lesser Edale that um, one finds rather shock-making. I'll stop you right there, Mr. Villiers. I imagine I know what it is you are driving at. You, you wouldn't be the first uh, coming here as a, I uh, uh, hope you don't take this the wrong way, a, a bit of a sensation seeker, uh, though I'm not saying that is what you are doing here. Um, we have had some troubles as of late. I'm sure the London tabloids are flush with stories of um, certain uh, things that have occurred here. Um, but uh, I don't begrudge your interests, as it were. I'm sure it's uh, very titillating uh, to, to hear of such things, but uh, it was a terrible bit of business that happened, and, and now I, I'm, I'm pleased to say the strength of our community is, is in how close-knit we are, and we are working to heal together, as it were. Yes, yes. So um, I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be surprised if you don't believe in the rather colorful local folklore surrounding the unfortunate incidents that have plagued your community of late? Uh, regale me with uh, such folklore. Maybe I'm not familiar. No, oh, well, <laughs> not to um, speak the, the local tales to the, to the Lord of the Valley, but um, it seems as though every tongue in Lesser Edale is um, rather obsessed with tales of uh, the local legend of the Black Dog. That it uh, wasn't a uh, uh, accident or mischance uh, that led to the, the unfortunate deaths of, of the three uh, citizens of your small hamlet, but a rather, a rather monstrous beast right out of the medieval imagination. Mm. I never met my mother, Mr. Villiers. She passed away um, in giving birth to. Uh, my sister, as it were. I mean, I imagine I met her, but I have no memory of it. Uh, I was raised by my father, but he was very busy, and I had uh, several, we called them nurses, that would take care of us. And uh, one of my earliest memories are uh, the fairy tales they would tell me to go to bed at night, and I do remember uh, such a tale. Um, you are a curious fellow, Mr. Villiers. However, I would suggest uh, don't uh, think that those sort of tales are true, have any verity whatsoever. Um, whatever happened here is, is thankfully uh, over with, uh, or so we hope, and uh, we would like to keep it that way. 
Listen, it was a pleasure meeting you. Uh, the dinner invitation uh, is still uh, on the table. Uh, I would uh, love to see you and your friends uh, tomorrow evening, uh, 4.30 p.m. Perhaps we can t- continue this conversation and uh, and I can learn more about uh, you, your travels, and, and your friend, as it were, that uh, put you on to this place in the first place. But I'm so sorry. I must leave, and I feel terrible. I told that uh, night watchman that I would wait around for the workers, but... Please, uh, a round of drinks for everyone here. And he throws like a couple pound bills on the bar. And everybody's like, cheer. Bill Whitlock grabs the money. He's like, oh, they're all cheering him. He's like, take care, everyone. Have a wonderful night. Don't get up on my occasion. And he walks out the door. Yes, delighted. Delighted. Um, and yes, Von Swan's gaze lingers a little too long as he walks out the door. And, um, and a wet carter walks in just as he leaves. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. I just bump right into him. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's my fault, my my good man. I didn't see you there. Oh, handsome devil. And then I move past him. Uh, and I go right up to Vaughn. Yes. Hey, hey. What? Why you look like that? What's hmm? up with your face? Your face. Why, what? what? Snap. What? What? Like a daydream or something. Anyway, listen. Some yes. dude was eyeballing the ladies. At first I was like, well, this guy's probably gonna try to work some magic on the ladies, but he did it. He was watching, like, real, like, steely-eyed, right? And I drew up all my courage, and I walked in his direction. But he got up, and he ran out, so I followed him. And he got into some car that he parked off the road and drove away. I, of course, was in a bush, but I saw the license plate, and I got it. So something's up. Someone's keeping tabs on us, just like that car in London. My, my God, dealing hast. You, you were there in hot pursuit of this blackguard. Oh, yeah, I, uh, I couldn't see well to start with, but then stealth the shit out of it, uh, and again, jumped in a bush. Yes, your quick thinking and uh, good luck that that uh, nicely concealing shrub was so nearby. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. My God, <laughs> anyway. this, 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 this is the second auto that's been that's been exactly. lurking around. Yeah, Casting we got, the, we got the full plate, the full license plate, though. It's all up here. Steel trap. Uh, tink, 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 tink. Well, Margo and Feyruz, you see Vaughn and Carter chatting. Carter's soaking wet, and um, you also by now would have noticed that who Vaughn went to speak with, who you assumed was Lawrence Vane, has left. Um, well, don't make any plans for tomorrow, old man. I'm afraid I've just um, uh, gotten us an invitation to dinner. Oh, where? Well, up at Plum Castle, old boy. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, Martha, Great, I guess. I, yeah, you and I yes. have a longer discussion to have. But right now, it seems as though two people have pissed off, and I, by the looks of their faces, it's somebody notable. Shall we? She looks over, she goes, oh my God, why is he vet? Uh, okay. Yeah, she'll walk over. <laughs> yeah, he's like really gesticulating. Really nice. He's like, ah. You have like a twig oh, in your hair. Comes over like, why the devil are you covered in wet leaves? <laughs> You're just like, peeling them off of him. Well, I'll tell you. And I tell her everything I just said to uh, mm-hmm. Someone was watching us? Yeah, some dude. And it's he more, got in his car. More lurkers and skulkers um, seem to have follow, followed us here. Mm-hmm. Well, what made you believe that it was... I mean, people look. We're obviously not from around here. Was there, what was was there something that? Call it an intuition. Call it instinct. Uh, call it expertise, if you will. But I knew something was up with this dude, and uh, and sure enough, when I started to make my way towards him, he got up and he took off. It's just like what happened in London when that car took off when I tried walking up to that. He and ran off. He ran off. Nobody parks a car. Off the road in the dark? That's crazy. He did that, got in, took off, got the plate though. Tink, tink. Interesting. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. Is anybody, would anybody be here looking for any of us? Why are we being followed? That is the question, old man. Who indeed? Like nobody knows that we're here, right? Nobody knows we're in England. We didn't tell anybody. And we didn't make any calls across the ocean to anybody to tell them. No, we so clearly blend in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. I'll tell you what, if someone did tell us... No, I don't know why I would be upset about that. Because I'm not going to tell them. <laughs> well, we have been asking rather a lot of questions around our 
about the Blue Pyramid Club around the Penu Foundation. I, if indeed these are a cover for some sort of black sect, then we, we must be forever vigilant and on our guard. As, as I always say, I, I, the eyes of the opposition are ever on us. Mm-hmm. But, but, perhaps we are, are, are drawing our snare closer around whatever it is that's causing the disturbances around here. I at least have got us an interview um, up at the uh, manor house tomorrow at four. That's we couldn't fantastic. make that like a brunch. We couldn't make that like a daytime. Maybe just some finger sandwiches during the day when there's no creatures lurking. <laughs> oh, come, come. Four o'clock. It'll, uh, the, I suppose we'll be leaving around sunset, but it's, we'll just swing around for tea. I mean, it gets dark here at like 1230 in the afternoon. <laughs> yes, there's a couple <laughs> hours of sunlight around about uh, noon. I bet you they'll send us a car back and yeah. Okay. Well, how fortunate that you were able to set up such a lovely and convenient meeting. Yes, I can't I wait found... to learn what he has to say and what we can learn from him because it seems like people are full of surprises around here. She looks over yes, at Margo. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay. Rather loaded. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I found uh, uh, young Mr. Vane um, terribly accommodating, although when I brought up the legends of the black dog, he cut short our interview and headed back to the hills. Um, it seemed as though he was rather loath to discuss it rather quick to sweep it under the rug. Okay. Well, we're going to have time tomorrow. I'm wondering if, let's say, just for shits and giggles, we're about to go to an evil castle tomorrow night. What if we hit up that uh, vicar about this order of the golden druid ding der witch Whatever the fuck. Someone's got it written down. I have to confess, I'm with you, Tillinghast. The Derwent Valley Order of the Golden Druid uh, must is 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 plaguing my imagination as well. Um I I think perhaps the time for shrub lurking stealth is past, and we should just ask the the churchman outright. Yeah, let's bring it up, because who knows? Maybe he's got some kind of cool, like, holy relics that we can use as like weapons. You know, uh, uh, against whatever creatures we're gonna face, it could be awesome. We could get all kinds of cool shit that will then maybe we sell later, but we'll see what happens. While yes, you're yeah, talking, Margot makes eyes at Feyre's, being like, "See, <laughs> 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 just asking people about orders." I don't say that out loud, but like you know, that's what my eyes say to her. <laughs> you could have just like you could have just asked like that. Yeah. That or okay. <laughs> if someone's a member of an order, they just can't keep it secret forever. It's, <laughs> no, they want to talk about it. Orders will out. What? Um, yes, and who knows? At worst, we get we get um some more information about exactly what the hell is going on here, and at best, perhaps he gives us a sword made out of a piece of the true cross. I think we're all getting a little bit of ahead of ourselves, but I will say that uh, should anybody have any extra, uh, I, I will also check if there's any extra silver jewelry lying about to distribute it amongst ourselves before heading out. You want to pickpocket everybody in the bar for their silver? Well, actually, <laughs> I was going to bring it up. Grab silver uh, earrings. Uh, what is that? Su- That's sleight of hand, right? Wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll this keep would an eye be the place to do it. Do you want to? So you want to pay a nighttime visit to the Reverend? Go back there. That's Col- what I was thinking. Do the old Columbo? Just one Just more question. One more thing. Since, uh, like since he sleeps. <laughs> since Myra was telling us he burns the midnight oil, I think yeah. it might yeah. be time to rap, rap, rap on that chamber door. Yeah. Yep. All right. So the four of you, uh, after meeting Vane Carter, having this uh, interesting uh, sort of uh, in, uh, what do you want to call it a. Uh, encounter wasn't really an encounter because you didn't speak but you followed this guy into the rain margo and Firuz discovery thank you margo and Firuz finding a little bit more about each other you leave the bar uh it's still raining out but it's certainly not what it was like uh when the skies opened up uh shortly after the church church service uh you stroll over to the vicar's house and just as his uh house woman said his housekeeper myra uh the lights are on uh, it's like a flickering candlelight. Who does what? Yes. Well, let's hope that Myra's getting out in this moisture. 
the lady is just simply a, a humanoid <laughs> lump of dust. She's gained 30 pounds in the last five minutes. <laughs> Forgot yes. that. She's, very she sleeps lady, in a tub. No yes. um, Myra the Arid. I, uh, is there I'm, like a I'm, window to look into before? Ooh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can kind of peer in and you can see um, the reverend is just like at his desk and he's rubbing his temples and he's looking at one book, looking at another, just like Those books. scribbling and you know, he takes his glasses off, rubs at his temples some more. Is it anything, any of the books that were already laid out open that Tillinghast has seen or is this yeah. like something else? Yeah, if you point it out to Carter, Carter, Carter looks in like maybe that's the one of those books on Latin translation that he saw. It's kind of unclear. The desk was a mess of papers, and it's still uh, there's there's no order to it whatsoever. Um, and he's just he's poring over these papers, uh, doing something. All right, who's gonna take point and uh, lube this guy up, so to speak, verbally, of course. <laughs> of course. Um, um, yes. Uh, Let's let's lubricate the vicar. Um, <laughs> episode title. I mean, I've been known to be persuasive. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus, maybe you guys can talk about. Forget. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. What? what? Talk not, about what? Nothing. I'm not talking about any orders. Knock, mm. knock, knock. <laughs> Just <immediately laughs> knock on the door. Okay. Um, yes, uh, Sour, you can, you, can, you can play the heavy, and uh, I'll, I'll provide the charm. Uh, okay. Yeah. Sounds good. You knock on the door, and uh, if you're still peering in, you see him get up and kind of walk over, curious, opens the door. Oh, um, uh, good evening. Uh, is everything all right? Well, that's rather what we'd like to know, old man. Won't you? Won't you let us in out of the rain? Um, I, I hope you don't mind. I, I'm. I'm just curious what this is about for you to return here at this hour of the evening. The um, Order of the Golden Druid. The, the German Order of the Golden. That part too. Yes. Druid. Um. All, all right. What? What would you know? It's better if we talk inside, sir. All right. Um, uh, y- yes, uh, fine. Please, um, please come in. He uh, closes his bathrobe. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's like, um, uh, I didn't know you guys actually ever changed clothes. That's uh, that's funny. Yes. No. I'm. 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 I, I was going to be going to bed uh, soon. I'm just. Finishing up some work. Uh, the uh, w- what? What would you know of the, the order? What, what? What? What do you? What is this about? Uh, we were rather. I did my you job. Tell us. <laughs> um, we we seem to find orders wherever it is we go, Stratton. Um, and more often than not, their intentions are malign. While some see this as no more myth and folklore and um, hokum. I. I We've, we've seen that it's all too real. What is this order, man? Are you a member? Out with it. I, 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 I am a member, but how, how do you even have that information? I don't... I mean, I guess that's neither here nor there. It's, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm more than just a member. I'm a, a secretary, as it were. I, I, I help to create the organization. It is a... Um, I don't know what you'd call it. It's, a, it's, it's an order devoted to uh, historical research of pre-Roman... Britain. It's really um, nothing oh. nothing of great interest. I mean, it's of great interest to me. I, I It was a, a hobby of mine, something I was very interested in. I found that others were as well, both uh, here locally and uh, in, in neighboring villages, and we just, we set up a, an, an uh, call it an order, I guess we maybe uh, too much time reading the Bible. I thought it had a nice uh, ring to it, but... Uh, Wait, this isn't some fucking ancient sec- society where you guys fight monsters? <laughs> no, no it's just the a, contrary. A, 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 a the colorful name for a group of history boffins? God yeah. damn it! Yeah, do a psychology. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Uh, I, <laughs> that, that does sound more oh, exciting. A big failure. 
I'll try two while I'm quiet. Um, it's a regular success. Regular success? He seems pretty genuine. Um, yes, I, I, I apologize if uh, this seems rude, but why bother me in, uh, at nightfall to ask me about this order? And also, how would you even know that I was a, a member of this if you weren't uh, out there snooping and, and asking questions? I mean, I've, I have nothing, nothing to hide, as it were, but... Um, then it's not he, a secret. Yes. Is it? No, no. I just it seems rather strange to come uh, barging into my home to uh, give me the th- third degree here about um, historical. Society. It wasn't strange when we thought you were a monster killer. Fuck! And Carter just like, goes off into the corner, <laughs> like really mad. Uh, forgive Damn my American it. friends' rather colorful language. Uh, yeah, sour. Listen, we we want to help um, with what is happening in the town. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I feel like everyone we talk to is not giving us truly what they know or what they think. You are obviously still troubled. You stay awake at night. You are stressed, poring over all these documents. We thought maybe the order had something to do with it. I guess it doesn't, but we're just looking for anything here. What is going on? What might have happened to our friend? How does it relate? What doesn't it? You say that this order is, is, is committed to pre-Roman British times, g- gathering artifacts and whatnot. Locals are members as well. Um, what sort of artifacts are you on the hunt for, old man? And as this is, conversation is beginning, Feyruz walks over with a handkerchief over towards Tillinghast as though she was like going to clean up all the residual leaves and shit. Um, but I would like to take a closer look at what's on his desk. Okay. Um, so he... You walk over there and you see he has like a book, looks like a handwritten journal maybe, uh, open and uh, it's in a language I don't believe you know. Um, And then next to it is, uh, it kind of looks like this translation guide from Latin to English. And you see papers that looks like he's trying to suss out what one thing says. Now, keep in mind, if he was a Catholic priest, he, like you guys had mentioned last week, he would know Latin uh, at this time. But this is a vicar, which is almost like a, uh, in some time, in some places, it's more of an honorable title uh, than anything else. But they do call him the Reverend, but it's a Protestant, so it's not so strange that he wouldn't know Latin. Mm. Um, you see that without kind of arousing his suspicion. That's all you really see. If you were to start rifling through, be like, "Hey, blood's gone." <laughs> Um, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not certain what it is that you are, um, asking of me. There are things, um, that I, I do as a, as a man of the Lord, um, that are private between the Lord and I. And, um, if, 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 um, if that were to to change, then, uh, I'm, I'm rambling, I don't... I, I don't understand what it is you want of me. Well, two things spring rather hastily to mind, Stratton. Is this order of yours, as as innocent as they may be, on the trail of some specific artifact? Uh, are your, is your is your order um, funded by a uh, wealthy benefactor, an organization? No, no, it is a simple historical society. I, I, I admit that we'd make it sound much fancier than it is, but we we don't even have enough money for pastries at the no. local meetups. So no pastries at your mixers? Oh, no. Damn. How do you get people to attend if they all know? Uh, people that have a, a passion for learning. Their passion for learning outweighs their passion for powdered donuts. Ugh, barf! <laughs> um, okay, in part two, other question, and, and Chilling has told us that there was a an, a Latin to English dictionary. We've, we've seen him from the window. Yeah, looking and something from one with the word vein on it, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what, what is it that you're translating? Uh, 
Stratton, is it, uh, something, something for your sermonizing? Um, yes. yes Mind if I have a look? Part. Oh, no, no. And he walks over to his desk and just starts covering everything. No, it's all, it's a jumble. It's a, it's a longer project of mine. It's something I'd rather not, uh, discuss. Oh, please, the dons of my school gave me a cursory knowledge of Latin, which I've tried to bone up on in, in recent years as I've become more and more a devotee of the Roman Rite. And, um, I will try to push the papers back out of the way to get a look. Um, he's like, no, please, I... Um, I'm gonna grab whatever that Latin text is. Yeah, I fucking get it. Share Please, it. you um, and he just kind of like resigns to let you take it, and you. And now's do the time where Latin, I roll right? Latin. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, Latin. What do you have in I, Latin? A forty percent. Forty. Believe? I have a forty. I have a, I have a schoolboy's knowledge. Let's see what I can glean. Here we go. Oh my God, I, I, <gasps> Ross couldn't, I couldn't be happier about this. I rolled a two under 40, an extreme <gasps> Latin success. <laughs> an extreme. Folks, this is why we play Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> the mid-season finale, Latin. I mean, that is, that is so, so ridiculous. In some games, you slay dragons. In some games, you translate dusty old Latin tomes <laughs> and they both rule. <laughs> <laughs> equally satisfying. Yeah. Latin Slayer. Um, <laughs> all right, so this is this is amazing. You pick it up and you see him like, no, no, but um, he doesn't fight you. He's an old man. He doesn't even attempt to fight you. And the rest of you notice not only does he not fight, but he almost is looking imploringly towards Vaughn ever since he mentioned that he has some sort of understanding of Latin. Mm. And you start looking at this journal and you see what he's translated thus far and it it starts off sort of um, foretelling uh, about a local legend that speaks of a large hound-like creature said to walk the land around Edale and the legend recalls that the beast was once the working dog of the last squire of the village which howled for three days and nights at the passing of its master. And Edale folk in this legend believe that if the howling should ever start again, it means someone will die. Among the further uh, pages that um, the Reverend seems to be translating, you see a passage relating to the trial of the witches of Bakewell in the year 1608. And it mentions a lady, Evangeline Vane, who was a witness for the prosecution. And so it appears that in 1608, a lady, Evangeline Vane, gave testimony at the trial of two women accused of witchcraft, known as the Witches of Bakewell. And the evidence given led to the sentencing of the young women to be hanged until dead. The legend says that one of the witches, uh, a young girl by the name of Annie Stafford, put the mark of the beast on all the daughters of the veins. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Okay. And there's and there's more there, but at that point, um, Reverend Staten is like, "You must understand. I'm 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 trying to help Lord Arthur. I'm trying to help. Um, I'm trying to help." Uh, the entire family something is wrong and and i just i'm i'm very close i'm very close and i uh, lord arthur commissioned this veins commissioned this translation uh, today essentially essentially they don't have the the means they are uh, they are they are nobles by birth they are not they don't have the, the same education as i do they don't speak uh, language i mean i don't even speak latin but i'm i'm an educated man i'm trying to help them there is something wrong there is something wrong, and I, I am attempting to help. I've, I've gotten as far as the legends, but there's something much deeper here, and and, and that what is, is what I'm trying to uncover. What, what, is, what so, could um, be wrong? Like I, everyone only says good things about them. The veins are are above board. Perhaps you should sit. Oh, okay. Sounds cool. Um. I have been 
working on this ever since, oh, probably two and a half months ever since the first um, murders took place. Um, I'm not sure where to begin. There is something wrong with the daughter. Oh. Eloise. Eloise. I do not know the full extent of it, but they came to me asking for help to try and figure out what is going on. Lawrence discovered these legends and uh, pointed me in the direction of the trials, but both uh, Lord Arthur, his son, and I all believe there is something deeper going on here, and that is what I am struggling to find out. He, he goes and he's like moving these papers around. There's there's text here that that even the most uh, the, there's there's an older Latin than I can understand. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Um, perhaps you could help me translate. Well, you know who's a bookworm. I mean, he, like points at Feyrus. I would be happy to take a look at it. Do you do you speak uh, Latin, or, or can you read it? Can you understand it? Well, I could read it, but understanding it will take some, a little bit of time. I do study cryptography, and so it is my, it is my area of expertise to take things that are unknown to me and and translate them, regardless of the language. It does um, take some time, though. Happy perhaps to if the between, three of us. maybe between. Yes. Myself, Mr. Villiers, who is uh, a renowned Latin scholar, uh. and yourself, I'm sure that we could make some breakthroughs in this concern. Yes, perhaps the, th the three of us could um, get to the bottom of what is happening here. Can you guys do it by 4.30 tomorrow? Because we're going to have dinner with the veins. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I've been at work at this for some time. Um, Maybe it would be best to sleep on this start first thing in the morning and with a clear head, um, as opposed to working straight into the night. If the three of us or the five of us uh, put our heads together, we could we could perhaps crack what is going on here. I've just been working myself and I am at a loss. While I also feel so close to understanding what really happened here, I don't think that someone cursed their bloodline because of a conviction. There's something else here. Something dark. Yes. Um. Stratton, are you working off of a... Are you working off of a document of 1608 that is referencing older materials? Or do you yes. have... Yeah, yes, yes. Yes, there are older materials. Uh, something from before this that I think is the heart of the matter. The veins, you must know, have entrusted me with this secret. I feel as if I'm not only betraying them, but betraying the Lord as well by telling you this. But I deem from the moment I met you that your hearts are true and your aims are just here. So just please keep this between us until the time is right. And I'm sure if we're able to figure this out, uh, the veins would be... Uh, would be most grateful uh, for anything you can do to help them. And I'll tell you, whatever it is you search for in the world, uh, having uh, Lord Arthur Vane and the House of Lords as your allies would be a, a, a very good thing to have. Yeah, yes. they're loaded, right? Uh, yes, they are. They are quite well off. Good to um, know. But they have connections all over. These are good friends to have, but they are also bad enemies. So, um... The question being, do we... Are we forthright with them and tell them our intentions of everything that we are working with you on now? Or do we try to gain whatever information we can without gaining yes. an enemy, as you say? I think it depends on what we find out tomorrow morning, I guess, if we're not going to research now. That's, yes. that's what I think as well, yes. Is there Perhaps the fruits of our research will dictate what to do next. Hmm. Is there a place in the morning where we may procure some pastries? <laughs> that would be lovely. On our way over to you. Yes, we could have our own uh, Dover Dorda of the 
golden druid meeting right here. Yeah, about that. Here's a little, just food for thought, sir. Yes. Maybe rename your little club the uh, the order of the crusty old nerdy bozos or something oh. because the, right, what you're doing right now it's throwing off uh, it's throwing everything off you know there's no, we like there's no fun in that Mr. Tillinghast like something like you know classy like the mystery squad right like something mm. like you know you hear that you're like I know exactly what they do that's just right? sounds silly there's no ambiguity there what are you talking about there's a, there's an innate dignity in the name mystery squad exactly <laughs> you're, 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 the I order like, of the golden I like mine druid better conjures up an image of, of people in long flowing white robes and wands made of mistletoe. Yeah, and fucking swords you, and shit. Are you telling me you don't go in for any of that sort of thing, Stratton? Do you no, guys no, LARP I... at all when you meet? <laughs> I don't LARP? understand do what that is. Do um, we do have robes, but it's really just, it's like a team, team shirts that we wear. Um, hmm. We spent all the money on that, which is why we don't have pastries. Right. Anyhow, I'm very tired, and um, yes, well. I, I can, I, as, as excited I as, as I am to dive into this, I must, um, I will pray on this. Yes, I will pray for yes. our success tomorrow. Uh, come oh. first thing in the morning, and we will get after it, and we will try to uncover as much as we can before your dinner meeting. Just please keep a low profile until then. Yes. Of we are masters of disguise and and shall stealthily blend into yep. this quiet little town. And we'll be back here tomorrow you. with some meat pies or some shit. Wonderful. And and, and you must know that I, I, I never intended to lie to you uh, in any way. I just was trying to uh, protect the, um, the, 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 the the sort of truths that were um, entrusted unto me from the veins. Um, but I, I feel as if in a way that you were sent to me uh, from God, and in his name we will get to the heart of the matter. Yes, too right. Too right, Stratton. Now you're beginning to get the picture. I too will keep you in my prayers. We'll see you in the morning, get some rest. All right. And we'll, we'll, we'll be your study buddies in the morning. <laughs> Good evening. And he shows you out, closes the door, and we'll be right back after this break. Ah. All right. Still relying on digital dice rollers for your random number generating needs? There has to be a better way. Now, there is. With the new Glass Cannon Podcast Campaign 2 cast dice sets, you can generate random numbers right on the table. No more hassling with smartphone apps or programs on the internet. No more judgmental stares from the Matthews of the world. And now when you meet that special someone out at the club on a Friday night and they ask you if you own any sets of gemstone dice, you can say yes on your way to sex town. Get your Glass Cannon Podcast Campaign 2 cast dice set today at glasscannonnetwork.com slash store. But order now. Quantities are extremely limited. Except for Joe Dice. We have plenty of Joe Dice. All right, we're back. Now, listen. You just terrorized this poor old vicar. Uh, you grabbed his books. You messed up his shit. <laughs> you're going back to the Laughing Inn, or you're going to explore something else in the night? Do we go back to the graveyard? <laughs> we did tell him we would not. We would be low key tonight. Let's Are just go. Let's go just go that? to yeah, bed. Yeah, we just said you are what the mystery it? squad. <laughs> uh, it's probably like nine thirty. Oh, we can't go to bed now. It's lame. I guess um, <laughs> there is no like. Uh, I guess it's too late. I was like a, sm- a silversmithing jewelry shop, like anything around. A new place just opened this break morning. Break into the church. <laughs> Maybe the, the church opening. has. I mean, there are the silver necklaces. Turn your gold those into silver. Yeah. Well, the new <laughs> Zales <laughs> just opened. Down the block. There is an alchemist nearby. Oh, we Maybe went to tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow yeah. when we meet with him, we can be like, hey. Can we just take those necklaces on the gravestones? Yeah. Yep. You mean the crucifixes? The crucifixes. The put, put there I by assume they were necklaces. I don't know why. 
Yeah, they probably were. Yeah. Um, all right, so are you guys want to do any sort of exploring, or you want to just, like, we go into to bedtime, straight to coming back to the vicar? I mean, Did I the church have, else. like, an office situation? Um, no, it was a pretty... Uh, pretty small church. It looked like there was maybe not even a bathroom there. It was like just the gathering hall uh, for those of you that were in the service. Um, And then the vicarage is close by on the other side of the graveyard. That's his, where all of his stuff is. I mean, this mysterious car that you said that you saw, maybe we can um, try to trace the uh, tire marks, but that Uh, involves walking around at night. But what was like? What what was the make of the car? Was it uh, was it a common vehicle or is it uh, an unusual one? What was? What color was it? Maybe uh, it shouldn't be hard to spot. These are all great questions that I obviously know, (laughs) (laughs) given Um, my role. I'm looking up cl- classic British cars from the 1920s. Are you pretty sure it was a good wooden revival? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes, it was, it was, I think it was normal. I think I would have. A Lemonster. A classic Lemonster. It's a Jaguar. Did you get a good look at the man, or? I did, I think. Oh, Yeah. what did they look like? Well, Troy will tell you. He was young, <laughs> uh, maybe like uh, mid-30s. And uh, maybe mid to late thirties, uh, dressed like everybody else in the bar, uh, and also he had a little cap. Not no striking features. Nothing jumped out. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. You got it. There it is. Yep. <laughs> so right then. Striking. Well, we'll just keep our eyes open for any other interlopers snooping around. Yeah, I say we go back, have a pint, listen to some twiddle fiddle, whatever music they're listening to in there. Yes. Chill out. We got a big day tomorrow. Big day tomorrow. So you go to bed. Maybe go back, have a drink. Yeah, let's not. We're not dorks. Right. <laughs> have a couple. Stay the last call. You never got your free drink uh, from Lawrence Vane. No. Um, so you go back. You awkwardly say, hey, that free drink that he offered. I know we left and came back. That's still good. We were here. We were here in the room. And he's like, "Ah, surely that beer is still warm as it was when it was poured. Uh, (laughs) Oh, this is ice cold. (laughs) (laughs) This beer is ice cold. In typical Mystery Squad fashion, maybe you guys overdo it a little bit um, in the middle of a mystery. Um, no. Sure. (laughs) You wake up the next day and you show up at the vicar's house. You knock on the door and he opens the door wide eyed, his eyes bloodshot. He's wearing uh, uh, normal clothing. He's not wearing his bathrobe anymore, but he's like all disheveled. And he's like, um, please come in, come in. Um, I say, Stratton, it doesn't look like you took your own advice. Uh, yes, no, I, 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 I know pride is a deadly sin. Maybe I was too proud trying to just figure this out myself. I, I ended up. I, I, I feel as if I didn't sleep. I was up all night. Did you bring meat pies and pastries? Uh, oh, yes. oh, yeah. Just reach oh, into my I'm breast s- pocket. I'm starving. Um, please, come in. I've, I've uncovered uh, a few things, but I, there's still so much more. Basically, the thing that I have been... Um, mo- I hope you don't mind if I, I'm just going to jump right in. The thing that I've been most drawn to um, since the... Um, since the veins came to me um, and said that there was a problem with the daughter was um, the journal of, a, of an older vicar, uh, a previous uh, man of the cloth, as it were, who um, who seemed to mention things um, similar to uh, what 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 uh, past uh, veins had gone through. And so I, I became drawn to that, and then that led me to the legends and back again. But it all ties to something that happens to a uh, a vein girl on their 21st birthday. And this is 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 what I, 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 I cross-referenced all throughout the night, and it seems to be tied to this. And and young Eloise had just turned 21 uh, before that full moon uh, that happened and these attacks. Now, uh, you should know, even though I'm close with the veins, they, they haven't given me quite all uh, the details, but um, it, it appears that, 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 that she is un, un, undergoing some sort of uh, illness um, that is, is, is either tied to the moon or tied to her um, uh, turning 21. I'm going to have another meat pie and just take a breath. <laughs> well, it's not uh, very common for girls to get uh, sick when they turn 21. Is it 21 when everything starts to change? And the moon thing also isn't in I'm a, I, I've never yeah. married. I don't... 
never made love. Carter's also kind of like leaning in, like, yeah, what? Yes, there's no, there's no, there's none of that. There's no such thing as pee cycles. There's, it's all, it's what? all, it's all, it's all for, for, it's a lack of, of, of male concern for the female anatomy in general. I see. I see. Well, um, <laughs> that was, I, I still, I'm still not 100% sure, um, but. I'm, I'm glad you're here. Let's let's dig into this and 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 see what we can see. You have until when? Uh, four thirty. You'll need to leave here by uh, four four fifteen, four four o'clock. All right. We should we should be able to make some headway. Uh, if not, you'll need to just pretend that you know nothing uh, when you go there until we can present him with with actual helpful information. Yes. Of course. Yes. Practice the utmost discretion, Stratton. Now, what is the the piece of this puzzle that's that's uh, bedeviling you? Let's dig in. Montage. This is, yeah, it's a montage, (laughs) the study montage. And this is going to take some time. And the time it takes is going to be pretty much determined by the roles. Um, I'm going to have another Latin role here just to see sort of the breadth of of how how, the speed with which you're able to help. And then let's do a cryptology role. Feyruz, just to see how much you're able to take um, what Vaughn is saying and kind of understand it in a possibly deeper context okay. or to realize that like you're of no help whatsoever, that this is just a straight translation and there's really nothing cryptic about it. Okay. okay. Here comes that Latin roll. Come, Come on. on. Favor me again. Oh no. <laughs> Sometimes lightning don't strike twice. Yeah, I rolled you, could, you could still... I rolled you an, can do 80, a push-a-roo. an eighty-seven over forty. I oh. I would love to push a Latin roll. So what's so the worst that could happen? If, how, if, the, if how what do you're I actually do doing more? is looking and helping, how do you how do you do something different? If you're looking, how do I do something helping? different? Um, Stand on I think your head. yeah. If I'm if I'm silently reading, maybe I'm just I, I I like I'm standing up like in my shirt sleeves and I begin kind of intoning and speaking the, the words more so. Um, in order to uh, get get them into my head and like remind myself of like being a schoolboy and having all this stuff bashed in my head by rote. Um, what is all this? I like this, and it's very unsettling, especially because you're not 100 percent sure what you're saying. You could be invoking some old yeah. um, curse. Right, I'm just speaking a bunch of Latin out loud in a small little uh, room. Yeah, that yeah, always works out well. I feel like Margot and Carter sit in the qu- sitting Damn. in the corner, being like, <sighs> "Yeah, just like okay." I failed again. 15 so, over 40. Okay. This is time. You can tell me. Right. I pushed a Latin roll, so you tell me how this blows up in my face. Okay. I'm going to put a pin in that. Let's okay. see if <laughs> Feyruz is able to <laughs> help. Okay. Success. Holy smokes. Like I wow. right on it. 70 um, on 70. I could, I could spend luck to make that a... No, actually, if it was a hard success, how would I need? 35. 30. Fuck it, I'll spend it. I'll do a hard success. Okay. All right, so you spend luck to turn that regular success into a hard success. Meanwhile, Vaughn fails a push roll, a pushed roll, after having extreme success the night before. Mm -hmm. So in the sort of uh, meta of the game here, it's not like all of a sudden you can't read Latin. It's just it's Mm -hmm. taking a long time. And the results of the fumble will be clear soon. Feyruz's cryptology, hard success, actually does reveal some interesting tidbits. So imagine this is happening over the entire day. What are Margot and Carter doing while the eggheads are busy cracking codes and translating? I was going to ask, like, I know everything, it's about, like, journals and translating words. Is there any, like, art that I could help to look at? Mm. Uh any sort of like illustrations yeah. or something. There is a symbol uh, that you find in a uh, one of the older tomes um, that the in, uh, previous vicar had mentioned. Say it's artistic so much as just like disturbing. Um, so yeah, you could give me some sort of a role on that. I have a, a fine art. Uh, Role I can make. Whoa. That's why I ask. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Give me a fine art roll. We do okay. have amongst us some jotted down symbols from stuff we've seen before. Oh, you do. yeah. You guys have taken many 
etchings of bar reliefs from pyramids. Well, so it's a rooms. 66. I'm going to spend six points of luck to make it a regular success. Okay. What I'll say is, you know, you're looking at the artistic connection to this. You know, you wouldn't know, oh, this is like a, a this so much as like, what does this mean? And you immediately start thinking of Miles Shipley. And this symbol that you see, this very disturbing symbol, you distinctly remember seeing on the altar of the painting that was in the um, closet. Oh my God. Um, so after I stared at it for a while and I realized what it is, um, I like maybe interrupted Vicar. I'm like, but have you seen this uh, symbol before? What does this mean to you? Oh, me? I'm sorry. I was talking to Vaughn. Did you, were you talking to me? I was reading my notes. Yes, this is your book. Oh yes, that symbol. Yes, I, I, that's that's one of the things I can. There's there's a passage here that connects to it, but I can't seem to to discover it. I know that this symbol is important uh, to what's happening here, but I'm uh, I'm not quite sure. You you say I've you've seen, seen. I've seen this before. Where did you see it? Um, we were uh, investigating another uh, strange happening, and why uh, you get and, around? And, and the, I saw this symbol depicted on an altar in a painting. An altar. The altar of the Black Pharaoh, maybe? Does this sound? No, that does not ring a bell, but uh, perhaps some sort of pagan deity. This would make sense because I do feel as if this is this this is deeper than some, you know, witch trial curse. Um, good good work, uh, Miss Sour. This may come in handy. And you continue to dig. And this is what you discover. It seems that for centuries, when a blood daughter of the veins reaches the age of 21, a transformation begins. And this is something that past centuries of the veins uh, knew about and tried to keep secret. It is like a family secret that they hide from everyone. And for four generations, no vain daughters were born and none of these transformations took place. So whatever this curse was, was lost to time until Eloise was born. Now her mother died in childbirth, um, giving birth to her. Maybe that was something connected, and Reverend Stratton mentions that. Maybe something in the mother's passing was was passed on to the daughter, but it wasn't until she turned 21, the first vain daughter that had been born in hundreds of years, or was it four generations? So it was 80 years that this happened, and the secret had not passed forward enough to the current veins. But as you dig deep, deeper and... Uh, Feyruz uses a, uh, her cryptology to try to understand this. You take this, this symbol, you realize what really is going on here. This is more than just uh, these witches saying, your line is cursed. In centuries past, the forebears of the veins enacted rites to a charnel god known as Mordigian. Mordigian and the god is the Mordigian god's name. is the god's name. And the dead were offered in supplication to the deity during rites of cannibalism and debauchery. The older, older, like original OG veins, uh, their blasphemous proclivities sowed a seed in a seed in their bloodline of this taint that runs deep in the blood of the veins. So in the acts that these unspeakable acts that they did uh, in celebration of their deity, Mordigian, caused a taint in their bloodline. And for unknown reasons, the blood taint is stronger in the females of the line. Every generation or so, it seems like the curse like skips a generation. Um, these female veins begin to manifest the family's dark heritage. Occasionally, a, a vain male has undergone this transformation, 
but in the main, it's the female veins who bear the brunt of this curse. And as you uncover this, it's like eye-opening. You guys spent all day trying to figure this out, like, what is going on here? And, and, and Strevin is like, yes, yes, this makes so much sense. See, and he's pulling out, like, family histories of the veins and tracing it like they didn't know. They didn't know. Lord Vane didn't know this. They, I, they, they, they were innocent. They just had no idea because the, 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 the translations have not been passed down and the information wasn't shared. Uh, the, the veins, I, I know, Lord Arthur Vane, he isn't some sort of uh, cannibal uh, leading in debaucherous rites. I've, I've, I've supped with him at, at Plum Castle. I've never seen anything uh, untoward. It's just, it's, it's, it's innate. It's innate in in her and and look here it says that the, the transformations will will happen at the face of the moon but eventually they become more frequent until they are permanent there is no cure the young girl is 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 doomed if these if these um, journals are correct there is nothing to be done oh Look at the time. Oh, fuck. And the results of the fumble is now at 6 p.m. Oh, oh no. You're late for your dinner. Sorry, guys. Oh, no. Uh, We've lost track of time. I was um, so uh, into watching other people read that I never once thought to look at the clock. God, uh, you guys uh, are just uh, so attractive. That's what it really is, I think. Or you kept trying to speak up and they were like, quiet, God. I yeah, continue. but guys, it's time to... Okay. Uh, well, well, you, we must be. We must be going. Donation. Um, yes. Wait. Wait. Before we go, I just want to double check something, sir. Did you say it was the Lord who came and asked you to figure this out, or was it one of the kids? Um, uh, Lord Vane and and his son came to me. They uh, both in, came in secrecy. Yes. Yes. They. I, I okay. haven't. Um, I've, I've I've seen Eloise, and and she seems perfectly fine. I, I don't think she has any knowledge of what's going on. They've been doing things to ensure that she doesn't remember. I I, I I'm not a hundred percent sure. But you okay. say, but you say that she has recently turned twenty one, and and that and that the the son has has uh, was seen to be quite disturbed. That one night, he must have seen something. They must I, know I, something. I, I imagine that they have not been completely forthcoming with me, but um, they, they at least entrusted me into trying to find a solution. And um, I, 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 w I will continue to study. Um, maybe, maybe the power of prayer could um, right this blight, but if this goes back to rites that were um, done in some dark god's name centuries upon centuries ago, I, 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 this isn't something that can be cured overnight. We, I, I'm not trained in exorcism. My curiosity now leads me to believe that possibly somewhere in this castle resides the, some remnants of these rituals and these some artifacts that would lead us to, to more knowledge about this, this god that they once worshipped. Yes, but, 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 but there's no cure? No cure, Stratton? The only... Uh, uh, then the, the, the poor girl is surely doomed. If, well, what are we to do? Go to the veins and, and, and reveal to them that if they don't wish the, the only female scion of their line to turn into a monstrous beast, that they must have the blood of their own child on their hands? It, it, it seems that they've discovered some way to keep it at bay. She, 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 she goes to church. She, she walks among us during the day. It's at night when this is a problem. Um, maybe in their mind, whatever they've done to um, sort of keep her safe in the evening is enough. Uh, that is no life. But nice. um, they, if they believe that there is a solution, at least here it seems for centuries they've been able, un uh, been unable to find one. Um, I just hope they haven't perhaps, uncovered their old worshiping ways. Locked up up there. Could we roll a Cthulhu mythos just to see if we can like know how to solve it? Yes. <laughs> Off chance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys, some of you have been, uh, you know, digging into the, yeah. the knowledge that one should not have. I have, I have, I mean, for Cthulhu Mythos, I have actually quite a lot. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, you're getting there now. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but but that still is, you know, a lot of Cthulhu mythos is still like under ten. <laughs> right. Nope. Fails. Yeah, I uh, fail. Um, I failed, but I think I could. I'll spend ten to make it a success. Ah. All right. So I have zero. It's not happening. You. In listening to Vaughn and listening to Reverend Stratton, trying to figure out what is really going on here, believe this to be the taint of the ghoul, a ghoul taint, which would you believe in uh, legends, ghost stories, or in, you know, what you've seen and experienced firsthand? Uh, as the horror of the other side of the tapestry has been revealed to you, it is irreversible. There is no, the only solution is a second death. And Feyre's just slowly looks up at Margot when asking, like, isn't there anything at the group? Like, isn't there anything that we can do? And she just very solemnly and slowly shakes her head. I'm afraid that with such a blight as this on their family bloodline, I'm afraid that there is nothing we can do for, for Eloise. But hopefully there is a way to stop others from being harmed as a result of this. So, wait, I just want to get this straight. We're going to go have dinner with these people, but for dessert, we're going to kill their daughter? Is that what we're talking about right now? Or we're just going to convey the information and be like, peace? I, I, I'm afraid I don't have a solution to this, Tillinghast. I, I don't know what it is that we should be doing, but I... I can't help but think that there's some other information to gain, whether from their direct mouths or whether it's from their family's records that they might keep in their household. Mm. Vicar, as far can as, you... I'm sorry. Well, I was going to ask the vicar if he can make us like a, a letter so that we can um, bring this up in a non-awkward way when we're there. <sighs> I I could I could travel with you. I could I could make the trip. I it it may be the best way to do this. Uh, the, I yes. can imagine Lord Vane being upset with me for sharing this information, but I can explain to him what happened, and um, I'm sure he'll understand. It is all in the service of trying to help his his young daughter. Obviously, the news will not be what he wants to hear, but we have not made any decisions. We don't know what it is uh, that that can be done besides the the obvious, which is not something I can do or can condone in yes. anyone. Yes, there, there, there must be a way. There must be a way. Uh, unfortunately, uh, but even if it's nightly confinement, as, as horrid as that sounds, at least her soul will be at liberty. Uh, here's just a thought that has probably no bearing on anything other than the Shipley symbol connection made me think of it. I have this vial of stuff that we took from Shipley's place. Does anyone remember why he was taking that other than to, like, hallucinate time-traveling lizards? He had mentioned that he had, um, Taken it to, to to aid in his in his visions, I believe. It wasn't to hold something off or hold something back or something. No, I rather thought it was to induce the, the sort of temporal warping of his mind that gave him the visions that he so okay. luridly depicted. Right. So that's but probably not. It, but where did it come from? Yes. What is it exactly? Is what we don't know. All right. All right. Well, I'm not going to put it in a drink then. <laughs> Keep in mind that. The, the creature, the lizard creature, Sithasa, had like a laboratory, a weird laboratory downstairs right. and was dosing Shipley with that. It was like yeah. forcing him to take that so he mm -hmm. could see things. Right, okay. 
It was like his the the gift. Oh, you want to be a famous painter? Take some of this. <laughs> okay. Buy the ticket, take the ride. So, uh, shall we then to uh, Plum Castle? Yes, we're already late. Uh, I, I mean, but uh, while dinner may not be uh, in the equation, um, we'll need to we'll need to share this information. I'm. I will do my best to keep up. I'm, I'm not uh, as young as I once was, and I have not slept, but I feel invigorated by meat pie and sugar. <laughs> yes. I, I'm terribly sorry for our tardiness. I, I blame my meager Latin skills. <laughs> <laughs> Should I go get my shotgun? Yes. Okay. Wait, what? Uh, your um, what? Don't worry about it's, this. I'm it's what we call our handbag, the ladies shotgun. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies Nothing and gentlemen. Nothing concern you. We... Thou shall not kill. Okay. Just, nope. Yep. Uh, All right. Get your guns and let's go to the <laughs> castle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Vicar, does the Vicar have a, you got a, I know we talked about this before. You got any extra silver doodads around? We can kind of just have on us, just, you know, for luck. Holy From the water, sounds of your whatever. friend, this, you this is not uh, a, a, a lycanthropy situation. Silver won't help you. If it truly is ghoul taint. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. What do you, you find something humorous about the phrase ghoul taint, Tillinghast? It's just that I've heard the word now for sev- like seven times, and I've been keeping it <laughs> from the first time. You've I've done been your best. I've been doing it, and it's finally here. Taint of the ghoul? Okay, ghoul taint? Ghoul, ghoul taint. taint. We don't know. Maybe ghouls aren't into silver either. It could be a whole monster thing. Here, I have three silver knives. Oh, great. Those steak knives. I'm putting them in my bandolero. Yes. Or bandolier, had, whatever it's called. <laughs> the five of you. The five of you head to Plum Castle. Uh, I mean, it is, it's is—it's—it's far away. Uh, it stands on a stone bluff about 200 feet above Lesser Edale. So it really looks down on the valley with Mom Tor on the other side. So you've got two hills with Lesser Edale sitting in the middle. There's a winding road that leads directly from the village right up to the castle's entrance. Um, As you're heading there, there's a second road that splits off, um, sort of a longer road that passes near the castle. From there you could walk, but, you know, the reverend is leading near there. He takes you up the the main road. Uh, You can tell as you approach that the castle has been rebuilt uh, over the centuries. Its stone shell has been uh, repaired and restructured, uh, perhaps to conform to the architectural tastes of the times. Oh, we heard Uh, all about this when the vicar went on and on about it last... Right, he gave you the whole history lesson. At present, it looks more like a Victorian mansion than like a classic castle, uh, although its crenellations uh, and aspect harken back to its... uh, original past um you come up to the door and uh you you knock and a uh an old servant uh opens and he's like um, welcome to plum castle um, uh, i i take it uh, you were supposed to be here for uh, dinner with the veins at 4 30 um I'm, I'm not sure if that uh, invitation is uh, still available, but uh, you are guests here, so please uh, come in. Sorry, we were just... Terribly sorry, that was, I'm so sorry. She looks behind her. Traffic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at, the, at the nothingness. <laughs> I see, yes, well, um, please um, come in. Um, I, I can bring you into the into the Great Hall and, and see if the veins will still receive you, um, but... Uh, I can tell you that the uh, the dinner has run cold. Uh, follow me. And he brings you, there's like a main door, and then there's two side doors in this long uh, sort of greeting area. Um, and you see paintings of former veins, like probably chronologically uh, along the wall, some antiques. Overall, though, you can tell the castle has seen better days. Um, this guy stops in front of a set of double doors, which looks like the the way into the next room. He's like, oh, a bit of interesting history here. This main door has been immobile since the day that Charles I 
was beheaded. Uh, no one can use it anymore. Um, so I'll be taking you through uh, one of the side entrances. It's a little bit of history. They like me to share uh, with mm. guests. I'm don't not don't. sure exactly as to uh, what its significance is. You know, perhaps uh, the vain ruler at the time heard that uh, the Charles had been beheaded and said, oh, I, what are they beheading rulers left and right? Lock, seal the doors shut forever. I'm not sure, but it is an interesting interesting bit of history right this way um and he brings you to a side door and takes you into the great hall and uh there are wood paneled walls tapestries chandeliers uh ornaments uh hanging everywhere there's an ornate fireplace uh large enough to roast a pig huge uh and then these long tapestries hanging along the walls featuring uh different medieval scenes um stag's head antlers other curios uh and the servant is like oh yes welcome this is the great hall uh, the fine uh, wood paneling you see here was as cleaned and refinished just before the great war uh, several new windows uh, were cut in providing a, a lighter more airy atmosphere and uh uh, and then a voice pipes up from the back, one which you have not heard. Oh, that will be all, Giles. Um, I will uh, call you presently, should we need you. Um, Reverend Stratton, I wasn't expecting you. Are you the reason our visitors are tardy for dinner? And Lawrence is uh, coming down, um, and he doesn't really say anything. Um, and Reverend Strand is like, oh, Lord Vane, um, I, I, I do apologize. I, I am the reason, in fact, that your dinner guests are late, but um, we need to speak. Um, any kind of motions to the servant. And uh, Lord Vane is like, this dude is polished. He's been trained in how to act. He doesn't give off like a, a hint that anything is wrong. But that will be all, Giles. I will... Uh, fetch you if needed and uh, the man walks out and Lord Vane comes down what seems to be the problem here and Reverend Stratton says um, first of all you should know um, Lord Vane I, I in no way betrayed your trust these good people um, have come because they, they wish to help and they did help me in, in understanding um, what what is going on with Eloise. And Vane just kind of bristles and says, I entrusted you with that information, Reverend Stratton. That was between you and I. Who are you people? And what are you doing in Les Adel? I can assure you we came here with, with no intention of, of disrupting anything in this town or, or to be in any way disrespectful to your family or the situation, but uh, truth be told, we've had some very um, tragic uh, events happen surrounding a, a very dear friend of ours, and we, I, I can assure you we are only here to seek the truth and to find any sort of peaceful resolution to the situation. And if there's a way that we can help you in any way, believe me, we are only here to help with the best of intentions. And what do the tragic events that befell your friend have to do with the veins or with my town? Only that he was a man given to uh, the research of certain um, well, how shall I put it, uh, Lord Vane? What people might call supernatural, uncanny, transmundane occurrences, and some of which we have ourselves borne witness to. He, I believe, was on the cusp of unraveling exactly what was going on here. We, not knowing exactly how it touched upon your family, came following in his footsteps, only to interview the good reverend here, and it was only by merest chance that we were able to lend um, our incredible uh, cryptological acumen, here indicating uh, m my fiancé, um, to the... Uh, Waves are ring. <laughs> to, the, to the issue. The issue, it seems, is the issue, your issue. And uh, 
or at Vane, perhaps softens a little bit and looks at the Reverend. So, can you help? Can they help in any way? And Reverend Stratton's, um... I don't know, uh, Lord Vane, but I think it's time we all know what is happening, and um, perhaps we uh, we all visit Eloise. And he says, um, she's got a headache and can't come to dinner. Yeah. And Lawrence puts his hand on his father's, like, arm and says, It's, it's all right, father. I'll, it's all right. Let me, let me explain. And Lawrence says it, it all started the, um, night of the full moon three months ago. I was out with the dogs in the morning light the next day when... I saw her lying outside the castle, uh, covered in blood. At first I thought she was hurt, or perhaps was attacked, so I I carried her in. The servants bathed her and and put her to bed, and and, and she she had no memory of leaving the castle or or anything uh, strange that could have befell her when she awoke. And then we heard of the first murder. It it couldn't have been Eloise. We were certain of it, but but we also knew that something wasn't right, so we locked her away in her room until we could figure out what to do. And uh, the next night, I was out at the Laughing Horse, actually, and when I came home, my father came running to me to say that she had escaped. Um, Her bedroom door had been torn from its hinges, you have to understand, my sister is uh, a, a slight young woman. It would be impossible for her to do such a thing. Um, I went looking throughout town for her. This was the night that Lydia Parkins was found, torn to shreds. I looked all over town for her and uh, could not find her. Yet again, she came home with no memory. The third night, we took greater precautions, still unaware of what was happening, and she escaped again. Um, We were not as practiced as we are now in um, confining her. That was when Harold Short was attacked, and um, I, I, I at that point saw her and saw what she had become. Um, Maybe a part of her still knew who I was, and she ran. I know not, but God smiled upon me that night while he cursed her. Every night um, that this happened, she would wander back home as the sun came up. On the fourth night, we left nothing to chance. We drugged her and uh, took her down to the family dungeon. Um, We listened and we checked in on her and nothing happened. We did it the, the next night again nothing again we kept doing it and then we started to think maybe it was the drugs maybe the drugs were stopping this transformation from happening so one night we we locked her in the dungeon without the drugs and still nothing so it was around this time that we thought that maybe it had something to do with the moon the phases of the moon so we waited and uh when the moon came sure enough Uh, The transformation began, but she was drugged. She lay asleep in her cell. The next morning, she changed back. We let her out. We did that for three nights, and then on the fourth night, no problem. Um, But then the pattern changed. The transformations began happening more regularly. Now, out of step with the phases of the moon. Uh, One night last month, she broke out. We weren't expecting her to transform. It had nothing to do with the full moon. Um, She broke out and uh, luckily only um, ravaged a cow in town. Um, And now it's been happening uh, more frequently. Um, So every night we dose her and lock her away. And uh, 
we didn't know better, we fear that uh, eventually she may change for good unless we find out how to stop it. And that is why we enlisted the help of the Reverend to try and find uh, a cure. Her howls echo through the land uh, on the nights that she changes. Soon the townsfolk will get wise. Uh, I, I, I go out and, and try to make it seem like everything is normal, uh, as my father wishes. But uh, everything is anything but. Um, what, what have you learned? family, it seems, have been through a great and terrible ordeal. I wish that we had better news to give you. Everything that we've discerned from the materials that you've provided to us seems to indicate that the changes that your sister is undergoing are doomed to become permanent. And there is nothing in the records that have come down to us for centuries that tell us any way to reverse the taint that seems attached to her blood. Is there some knowledge in your family of why she carries this bestial curse? All, all we know is the stories of the, the witch trial, um, the mark of the beast. We just assumed that there was some verity to that. Uh, they they say that witches, witches did walk amongst us. Um, perhaps this woman, out of spite for being convicted, uh, did curse our bloodline, and and so the Reverend has been has been looking into that. Isn't that right, Reverend? Well, the I Reverend have no doubt. Silent. I'm like, well, I have no doubt that the agents of the evil one did and do walk abroad. Uh, it is only a part of the story. I'm going to. I. I might the your deep family history have, of your family. Yes. Might your family have any personal records, heirlooms, anything of that sort? Possibly you may not, it, it, may, it may not be something that's legible to you now, but is there, is there anything that has, the family has held on to? Perhaps something with that looks like this. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> the symbol, symbol maybe? Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, anything from um, the, like the original veins that confused um, you. I, I know that symbol. In our library, there is a, a book um, where that symbol appears frequently, but I, I cannot read it. Uh, this is somehow connected to what has happened to Eloise? Yeah, are you yes, aware of your family's religious history? Uh, no, no, I, I, I know they say those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it, but I, I am not really interested in such things. So it Troy, us into your library. Troy, I'd love to do a, a psychology off of that. Yeah. Mm. Off, mm. off of asking him about the religious stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, see yeah. if you're lying. Why is it? Uh, I got a 37 under 50. Nice. 37 under 50. He seems to not know. He seems really genuine to not, to be surprised that there could be any religious connection. And this is the son I'm talking to, right? That's Yeah. That? Okay. What does the dad look like while the son's telling the story? Does he, he look shifty at all? Hiding he, he's just kind of like slowly sunk to sitting on the stairs mm -hmm. that they came down. And he's got his head in his hands. Um, he says, "Father, I'm I'm going to bring them to the library, and then um, and then I can bring you to her. You just have to promise me you will not harm her in any way." I if shoot a glance no, at Sour. <laughs> if there is no direct harm at us, I could assure you that. No harm will come to her, and you, you do say- She will say, be asleep, and she will be uh, in, in her cage. And I just French, want to also go she back. she just kind of like, <laughs> at that, at cage, just kind of- The family dungeon, winces. I guess I'm not used the to European dungeon. customs, yeah. but and to have you, a family dungeon is very impressive. Yes, you it's, say it, that it hasn't she, been used in a long time. 
I hope not. But it's perfect for this occasion. Of course, I'm sure it's it's finely decorated. Uh, do you... <laughs> what a lovely room of death. <laughs> do, and you, you say that she has no recollection of these occurrences when she breaks free. Bless her soul, she has no memory, and she would never in her right mind commit such unspeakable acts. You have to understand oh, she wouldn't, naturally, she wouldn't naturally. hurt a flower. Oh. Um, if she were to know, we've never told her. Every night we just say, here's your tea. Oh. And she drinks it, and then we carry her downstairs and chain her to the wall. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm sure that there would be no way of making her remember such things as she looks at Tillinghast and then her eyes dart down to his side pocket and back up to his eyes. My cologne? Oh, right, yeah, though, yeah. Mm-hmm. The juice. Um, all right, as long as we're all on the same uh, page here, uh, to the library. Father, I will... I will uh, take care of this. Reverend, would you stay with my father? And uh, Reverend Stratton is like, of, of course, Lawrence. Um, Lord Vane, and he, and he just sits by, beside him. And as you're walking away, you can hear him, like, praying. And Lawrence takes you through the house and uh, over to the library. And there are high-backed leather chairs, tables all over the place, lar- white, large, potted plants, uh, beautiful uh, windows that you imagine during the daytime, the light must filter in uh, wonderfully. It must be a great place to just sit and read. There are world maps, encyclopedias. Um, you're looking Favors around. Is <laughs> yeah, Favors is heaven. Um, you, you, uh, you start looking around and he's like, um, that, the book with that symbol, the book with that symbol. Uh, yes, here it is. And uh, he pulls out a book and it is like uh it's like a slim octavo volume and uh he says i i you know uh, the reverend was the one that was helping us try to uncover what's going on here but i i was trying to do my best to see if i could uh, support him in his research and uh I wasn't very helpful. However, when you showed me that symbol, I remember seeing it in this book here. And he uh, he opens up this dusty tome and says, Ah, see? And you see like a, uh, it's like a hand written in archaic script in English of something with that symbol. How very fascinating. And you read it and it talks about uh, a form. This is like hundreds of years ago, a one of the lords, his name was Lord Edgar Vane. And it's like his personal journal meant for only his eyes. And he's written that symbol. And as you look at it closely, it must have went straight over Lawrence's head. It's written in, it looks like what you would think is brown ink. It's dried blood. And <laughs> it is describing the early religious beliefs of the Vanes and how they practiced devil worship and were dedicated to a blasphemous idol um, that he calls Mordigani. And you realize it must be like what he called Mordigian. Um, It goes on to say that the family called upon this god to satiate their foul desires and talks about cannibalism and horrible unspeakable acts that they did with corpses um, and these rites that they would do in Mordigian's name. And so it just corroborates everything you read. And the other thing, like the early veins were indulging in horrible acts for this God who in turn tainted their DNA with this curse. Whew. Hence the dungeon, apparently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's in English. So, like, we kind of, right? It's in English? Yeah. So, like, yeah, we, we kind of just... point that out to him, saying, yeah. see, this is what we learned earlier today, and it's it's confirmed right here. This is what actually happened and why this is happening to your family. Curses can be lifted, though. Curses are lifted all the time, and, and, and they are they are fanciful. Um, we, we can figure this out. Um, I, I, I will take you to her, and we will we will examine her together. Um, but uh, 
Just remember, curses curses can be lifted. I've read that. There, there is such a thing as, as curses sure. that can be removed. Yeah, she, Feyre's puts her, like, a hand on, uh, on, uh, on Margot's forearm. Yes, yes, of course. Shh. Of course. All, all curses can be lifted. That's why we are here. We are here to help find a way to lift this curse. Yes, all of us. No, yes, no one is with... Precious Eloise. He rolls a psychology on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> do we want to, uh, since we're in this library, does one of the nerds want to do a quick Are check to see? Hidden? Yeah, yeah, just to course. check, like, are there any other books in here that yeah. might help yeah. us? If we, if like, we pull, maybe like, swing I'm open. Reading, I'm Carter, library, like, what do we do, English? library use? Or Carter really hidden? wants to find a way around killing this woman, mostly because of having the connection to this family. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah, spot hidden maybe, because I'm looking for something that's maybe, not, like, maybe they're not telling us. Yeah. And it's I, I failed my spot hit. You failed Is that your what we're spot rolling? Hit. Success. Oh man, I keep rolling right on it, right on the it's a regular. Um you do notice that uh, there aren't any books of the occult. <laughs> this seems to be like a, a true library of knowledge. It's just that there is this <laughs> journal tucked away in here uh, talking about the charnel god of the ghouls, Mordigian. Um, but you don't see anything else, like, without hours of staying in here to really dig and see if there's anything else that could also reveal information about the greater mysteries at hand. Nothing like, at a quick glance, you notice, like, oh, if I pull on that candlestick. Right, right. <laughs> okay, so we'll just turn like a it around. Quick, uh, in, a, in a hushed, uh, perhaps if there is anything else that would give us any knowledge on this matter, perhaps it's not here. And hidden somewhere else in this house. Yeah, my point is, maybe we don't have to resolve this right now. Do you know what I mean? Like, what if if she's locked up and she's safe and she's not getting out? Maybe we go back to London at some point and we check out those books in that creepy basement Margot and I found or something. Maybe we can, you know, sort of tuck this away as a, on our to-do list. Do you know what I mean? I'd maybe. love to see her. Or, yes, we can see her. We should check her out. And we should check the situation out. Yes, indeed. Um, I, I will approach uh, Lawrence and put my hand on his shoulder. Ah. Uh, uh, apologies. apologies. Sorry. Old man. Um, a little jumpy. Yes, I, I, I dare say, I think we all are, after, after what, we've, what we've learned. I'm curious, I, I've noticed, of course, that you've got this sort of um, fashionable, gothic exterior. But is there any part of Plum Castle that, that dates back to its... 12th century roots, if my memory of what Stratton was going on about. Yes, any of the original foundation, perhaps? Um, the the, the dungeon is obviously a a part of the old tradition, but the only other edifice or structure that's really connected to the past is the the mausoleum um, that lies on the grounds um, outside. Uh Uh-huh. I've been there, there's really nothing to see. Would it be at all inconvenient uh, to you if we should have just a look? At at the mausoleum? Um, um, Sure, I I, I suppose. uh, I suppose you could. Um, Would you like to go there before seeing Eloise? Let's see Eloise. Let's let's see Eloise. Tension is building. Yes, Uh, I, I very much want to see her. And don't worry. Uh, Lawrence, if I may be so bold as to talk to that. Um, one isn't responsible for the crimes of one's one's family's past. All of us bear some burden of original sin with which we suffer. But through grace, one can lift any curse that, that, may, that may plague us. Yes. Yes, good. But I think we, I think we all understand each other. Come now, I should warn you, I don't know what kind of night tonight is. So, yes. there's no way to know. Prepare your minds against what you may see. Um, right this way. And he leads you through the library into a long hallway into a uh, like 
wine cellar, a wine room. And at the back of the wine cellar is a door. There's a little uh, rock on the wall uh, that has a key attached to it. <laughs> he takes it off the wall, unlocks the door, hangs the key back on the hook, and then opens it. And there is a staircase that leads down. At first, it looks completely dark, but then you see flickering torchlight, like bouncing off the walls of whatever's under Plum Castle. And he's like, um, "Just watch your step. Um, we we keep the sconces lit for obvious reasons, um, but uh, it sometimes the condensation down here uh, it can be a little um, slippery. Uh, right this way." And you go down this long flight of steps. You go deep, deep underground. Carter's like, you go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead. I'll just take up the, just take up the rear here. Yes. Rear um, guard, Tillinghast. Yeah. It's like right this way, and uh, you go down the steps. It's getting colder and colder the further you go down, and eventually it opens into this dark stone chamber that is like freezing cold. You see ancient chains, like hanging from the walls and then cells uh, sort of in the back around the corner. Uh, he says we we started with just the chains um, but she quickly um, found a way out of those so now we do the cell uh, and the chains and we try to keep her uh, further away so that uh, on the nights that she howls it doesn't uh, alert the staff who most likely already know something Ugh. horrible is happening with our family uh, right this way and uh, we follow Lawrence Vane as he goes and walks down all of these empty cells they stink you can hear rats squeaking about and you get to the last cell and Lawrence's face like drops He's like, no. Eloise? No. Eloise? Eloise? And you look in, and the chains have been ripped from the walls, and there is no one in the cell. And we'll see you next week. Yep. Yeah. Fucking yeah. 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 That's God. <laughs> We're stuck in the dungeon with this beast. <laughs> oh my God. Kawe Kanem. Kawe Kanem. Oh, man. Glad I have my shotgun. Good thing you stop your shotgun. Thou shall not kill. <laughs> <laughs>